exit the first round and Howie Roseman being the guy who makes the picks, to me, there is no reason for the Eagles to sit back and have this draft dictated to them. Go get the guy you want. Dallas still stinks. You're by the way, King Dingbat here, and I hope everybody's having a great day, a better call all day, to be frank, because today, the return of Philly 500's favorite show on TV currently, Better Call Saul, returns. Cannot wait. It is going to be awesome. Breaking Bad is probably my favorite show of all time. But I love Better Call Saul. It is up there with one of my favorites. And it returns tonight. Cannot wait. It's going to be fun. Now, we've got a lot of Eagle stuff we got to get into. But before we do that, i got to say, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like Make sure you subscribe for Eagles Daily Content, NFL Daily Content. You do not want to miss it. And if you've been subscribed for a while, just double check. Double moonwalk check that you have not been unsubscribed, especially over this past weekend. I've had a lot of people tell me this past weekend especially, it's been happening again. Uh, people have been getting multiply unsubscribed. So just double check. Double moonwalk check. We are closing in on 39,000. We got like 35 to get there. Uh, let's get there. Before the draft starts, um, I could use your help. Uh, hit that like, subscribe. Now, <sighs> better call Saul tonight, baby. That's what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about. Denzel Washington and Dallas. You know it. It's Monday. It is the start of an important week because the Eagles, this draft, for them, it's huge. It's huge. The next two drafts. Who is texting me? Stop texting me. Dude, the next two drafts are really, next two years of drafts are really important. With two first round picks in each of those two drafts, you've got to hit on these picks. You have to hit on these picks, which takes us to Howie Vision. It's Howie Vision. We're all just living in it. Uh, we have to trust that this man is going to make the right picks and the right drafts. I have no confidence that he can do it. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. Does great job dealing with trades. He's always going to get good value for things. He does a great job at that. Picking out talent is not his strong point. And I have no idea. Like, literally, like, I have no idea what this man is thinking. I have no idea what the Eagles are going to do. All these mock drafts, to me, are worthless, especially this year. A, a lot of times, mock drafts are worthless anyways. But this year especially, they're all over the place. You have guys going number one, like Trevon Walker. You have Malik Willis in some drafts going number two, not even going to like 15 or 16 in others. Uh, like, everything is all over the place. I have no idea how this draft is going to go. But here are a few things I do know, okay? One, you got to try to get Jordan Davis in this draft. I really believe you have to try to nail Jordan Davis in this draft. And how, where you do that, uh, probably you're going to have to do it anywhere from 11 to 15, okay? So I think you got to try to get Jordan Davis. And you might have to trade up, but he may fall to you. I mean, you can't have all these guys entering the top 10 without guys falling back, right? You hear Stingley's in now in the top 10. Jameis Williams in, is in the top 10. Jameis Williams is in the top 10 coming off injury. That's crazy to me. Um, same with Stingley. Then you have Garrett Wilson. He's now a potentially top 10 pick. Well, if all these guys are top 10 picks, then somebody's got to fall back. And if it's a guy like Jordan Davis, I got to snag him. I got to snag him. And if the Eagles... If, if their first priority is cornerback, which it very well could be, okay? If the Eagles decide, hey, we're going to go cornerback, uh, then to me, the thing you have to do, the thing that has to get done is you have to trade up for that corner. Uh, you have to try to go up, let's say, 8, 9, 10, 11, somewhere in that range. You got to get that 15th pick. If you could do it with the 18th pick, you do it with the 18th pick. But if you have to get that 15th pick and you've decided, like, we need a corner first and that's where we're going, then trade up, uh, you know, first, a third. Maybe you can throw in Andre Dillard in there and get up. Uh, because, listen, Andre Dillard, 
his contract, the Eagles are going to have to make a decision on whether they're going to pick up his option year or not. He was a first round pick. I think this is the perfect weekend during the draft to trade him. Right at draft time, maybe even just the days after draft, perfect time to trade uh, uh, Andre Dillard. And the reason why you trade Andre Dillard is this reason, right? Because I understand the idea you want depth, you want the line, all those kind of things. Well, the problem with Andre Dillard is he can play left tackle. He actually improved and he actually showed he can play at the left tackle position. Struggles at right tackle. So he's not a guy that you can interchange. He's going to be a left tackle. He's going to be behind Jordan Mulata. Uh, you know, you pick up his um, <clears throat> the last year of his contract. going to cost you too much money. So you trade him. What do, what do you think he's worth? What do I think Andre Dillard, a first-round pick, a guy who showed that he could still play? Uh, I think you could get at least a second-round pick for him. I think you should ask for at least a second-round pick for Andre Dillard. So maybe you take that 15th pick or the 18th pick and you take... Andre Dillard with a second value, second round value, and you move up. Draft your corner then. Go take Derek Stingley Jr. if you really want your corner. What I don't want the Eagles to do is this. This is what I worry about. The Eagles decide we need a corner, but we're going to stay right where we're at, and we're going to let the, everybody else draft and dictate who we pick because we don't want to trade up. So the Eagles sit back and they wait. And let's say you get to a situation where you're at 15, right? And you have Jordan Davis on the board and OJ McDuffie on the board, okay? Now, the Eagles say, hey, you know what? Uh, we need a corner over, you know, over the best player available on the board, which is Jordan Davis. So they go out and they take OJ McDuffie. Then Jordan Davis goes the very next pick or the pick after, and he's gone by 18. See, I don't want that situation. I think you have to go with the most talented player on the board at that point. So, to me, if you've decided, and if the Eagles have decided, and I don't know if they have, but if they decide, well, listen, our first pick has to be a cornerback. We've got to go corner and address this cornerback situation. Then, to me, what you've got to do is trade up. Trade up. Trade up. Try to get in range and get Derek Stingley Jr. If somehow... Uh, Sauce Gardner is there at six. Make your move. Go ahead and get him. Okay. To me, at least I can say, well, those guys may have, you know, from a talent perspective, maybe you had them rated higher <clears throat> or close to a Jordan Davis. But an OJ McDuffie to me would be a, a move I would not like. Okay. I would rather be in a situation where the Eagles take a Jordan Davis at 15, then come back at 18. And take a corner, you know, maybe an Elam or Booth Jr., somebody like that. Um, I would much rather that situation, or even trade back that 18. Like take Corey, take uh, Jordan Davis at 15 if he's there, or if you trade up a couple spots and get him, and then at 18 trade back, maybe trade back to 25 or something like that. Pick up an extra second round pick if you can. Take a corner at that point, and then in the second round. Then you take your wide receiver. And then with the extra second round pick, snag David Ojabo. Something like that. There is plenty of maneuvering for the Eagles to do with two first round picks in the top 20. To me, with two top picks in the tw tw top 20, you have to be one of the most aggressive teams in this draft. There is no reason why the Eagles should just sit back and let everybody dictate to them what they're going to have to do. I hate that more than anything. Dude, like, I really hate it. I hate the idea that everybody else picks before me, and I just sit there waiting and waiting and waiting. And then I say, well, this guy I really wanted, this guy I really wanted, this guy I really wanted. They're all gone. So I'm just going to have to take somebody else. And then I got to put it in the hands of Howie Roseman, Howie Vision, that he is going to pick the right guy. It's not what I want to do. Go get the guy you want. You've got two first-round picks. You've got two third-round picks. Go make it happen. That's what I say. So the Eagles need to be aggressive. To me, if you come out of day one and you sit back at 15 and 18 you just wait, I mean, it, it obviously it'll depend who, who falls to you, but I'll be very nervous in, in that situation. I think you have to make a move. Like, for example, if the Eagles don't make a move last year, Right, if they don't trade up, they 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 would lose out on Devontae Smith. They would have lost out on Devontae Smith and Parsons. Most likely, the Eagles would have traded out of the first round, got the extra first round. Maybe that's not a bad thing in the long run, 
But they, if you look at early in that draft, or really up till Dallas's pick, everything was just being dictated to the Eagles. It was like it was going as horribly as possibly as you possibly can imagine. But the Eagles, they were aggressive and they went up and got it. A couple years ago, when Brandon. Oh, when Brandon Cooks came out, right? The Eagles wanted Brandon Cooks. They're sitting there waiting, 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 waiting. Um, just waited. They let everybody dictate to them. New Orleans took them. So to me, you have to be aggressive, especially with two first-round picks. What I don't want is I don't want to take need over talent um, to the levels um, that I think the Eagles could possibly do if they're taking the third corner off of the board instead of the best defensive tackle on the board. To me, if you really want the corners that bad, trade up and go get them. Otherwise, um, take go make a play for Jordan Davis. That's what I say. Um, but we're gonna find out. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. And, and I think you gotta use Andre Dillard somewhere in this whole thing to move up. Now, we are still waiting on the Honey Badger. We haven't heard anything from him yet. Um, still a lot of speculation that the Eagles are in. On him, uh, I'll say this about him, okay? I don't think the Honey Badger is going to be in any rush to sign before the draft. If you're him, why not just sit back, let the draft happen, and then see what teams haven't, you know, haven't taken care of the safety position, still have a need at that position, and then negotiate. It seems like, to me, that would be a strength for Honey Badger to do that instead of rush and get it done soon. I mean, I hope that he signs with the Eagles today. I think the Eagles need to make a play for him. And I think the Eagles are definitely in on him. But I think I think if you're looking at it from Honey Badger's perspective, to me it makes sense. Just wait. Let the draft play out. Let's see who these teams draft. The Eagles, the Rams, if teams come out and they still need a safety to come in and play right away. Uh, I think from a negotiating standpoint, I think you're better off. You know, what if Kyle Hamilton does fall to 15 and the Eagles snag him? You know, something like that. And then they're not trying to get um, Tyron Matthew. So you just don't know. But if I was if I was the Honey Badger, I wouldn't sign until after the draft. That's what I think he's going to do. Uh, hopefully the Eagles could get it done before that. That would be really nice. Uh, but we'll find out. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Do the Eagles stay put or do you be aggressive, go up, get the guy you want, use Andre Dillard as trade bait possibly, and move up and do what you got to do to acquire the guys that are the highest on your board. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. It is how we vision and we're all just living in it. So tonight is Better Call Saul. That's right, Better Call Saul. I don't know if you guys watch that show or not. To me, it is one of the great shows. There's a lot of people out there who actually think that that show is better than Breaking Bad. I don't agree with that. Uh, I think it's a great show. It's a, more of a slow burn than Breaking Bad. But it's really good. And I cannot wait to see it. But I have to say this. Before I watch Better Call Saul tonight, before I'm chilling out there, and I forgot to say this in the video, so I'm saying it now. I will be streaming the Sixers. Game 2, uh, 4.30 my time. I may start a little late depending when I can get home. When games are at 5, 5.30 my time, I have a much better chance of catching here and being here for the beginning. When it starts at 4, I've got no chance. 4.30, maybe depending upon how the day goes, I can get there in time or slightly after. Um, we'll see. But I will be streaming at some point the Sixers tonight, so look for that. With that said, Denzel Washington. 